Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Business Incorporated, coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwabo. On the show today, Glencore offers charge new plan to repay more than $1 billion loan. Kaya Airways completes $2 billion debt restructuring. Plus, Angola president dismisses Sonangol Chair Isabel Dos Santos. We get started now with the markets right here on the African continent. And it was a beautiful intraday trading for the South African market as the Jersey index inched up 0.41%. But the story is not the same for markets here in Nigeria and Egypt. Both markets lagged at intraday, down 0.13% and 0.75% each. The Nairobi stock market in Kenya closed in the green on Wednesday. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's stock market edged down 0.60% at intraday, while Dubai's real estate firm, Emma Properties, gained after price in the initial public offer of its local development unit. Wednesday's 1% one drop, one drop by the Saudi index raised doubts over the extent to which state linked funds are still willing to support that market. Since the announcement of the Saudi anti-corruption probe at the beginning of last week, state linked funds have been buying stocks towards the close each day to prevent Riyadh's market from falling significantly until Wednesday when the fund's activity appeared to decrease. Emma Properties climbed 0.6%. It priced the IPO of its unit Emma development at 6.03 dirham per share against an indicative range of 5.7 to 6.9 dirham set earlier this month. However, the index was down 0.21% at intraday. And some fund managers say the pricing was lower than Emma could have achieved given the size of institutional demand and that Emma seemed to be accepting a lower pricing to make sure retail investors bought into the IPO. Uh, looking at Qatar's index there, it climbed 0.83% as real estate company Esden Holding rebounded 1.2% after plunging 6.5% on Wednesday following its downgrade to junk status by credit rating agency Standard & Poor's. Abu Dhabi was down 0.2%. We move on now to Europe where equities were higher in morning trade as investors monitored earnings and key data releases. Let's bring in Janelle now for details. Good afternoon, Janelle. Our U.S. investor Severus has taken over 3% stake in Deutsche Bank, becoming one of its largest shareholders. Now, how significant is this acquisition for this German global lender, the shareholders and, um, of course, the investors? Hello, good afternoon. It is quite significant indeed, and that is something that investors have also shown because they help push share prices of Deutsche Bank to an increase of 2% here in Frankfurt. And one of the key reasons, reasons is this. Now, Cerberus, of course, taking a stake at Deutsche Bank is considered by investors here as a vote of confidence in the turnaround strategy currently being employed at the bank. We know how much Deutsche Bank has suffered in the last years. It has, of course, a problem with capitalization. It's been hit by the double whammy of a low interest rate environment, a lack of consolidation in the sector, making competition very difficult and cutting into market share. Now, CEO John Cryan, of course, has been under a lot of pressure to be able to show that this turnaround strategy is garnering results. And of course, this strategy involves a massive restructure, one that has been very present in the headlines. But the, this, uh, this news that Cerberus had taken a stake is also generating a lot of excitement for another reason. And it is because it's um, sparked merger rumors again between Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank. Uh, that's Do that's uh, Germany's number two bank, of course. And together they would have a joint market share of 10%. Now, if, sir, if uh, this did come to pass and a merger did happen between Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank, Cerberus would stand, of course, to win from both sides of that deal that has investors pumped all around but here's the rub um, it's never quite a straightforward a picture as we would want and a merger is still considered a remote possibility before John Cryan's turnaround strategy is completed and that isn't envisioned until the end of 2021 uh, and you know 
A lot can happen in six years. The landscape might shift considerably until then. And as such, it is hard to see whether investors' optimism would really hold that long. That's the case with M&A market. Well, still in Germany where you are, from diesel emission scandal to Wednesday's raid of its headquarters, Volkswagen is planning to boost its investment in electric vehicles in China. Is the automaker biting more than it can chew at this time? Well, investors don't seem to see it that way. They are celebrating this move very much. The share price is up 2.5%, making it one of the clear winners in today's trading. And that positive reception is, of course, something Volkswagen could really use after the negative news of yesterday of its legal troubles and the raids relating to compensation towards its works council. In addition to that, it also shows that Volkswagen is making gains in the ambitious goals that it set out for itself. One of them being, of course, that it will invest 20 billion euros in the field of electromobility by 2030. Now, it remains to be seen how fast charging infrastructure also in places like China could catch up. But investors are also cheered by the fact that it's becoming steadily cheaper to build these so-called new energy vehicles, especially as manufact more manufacturers are getting in on the game and that's creating economies of scale. So this is the sort of thing that might push along the adoption of electric vehicles faster in many markets across the world. Now, but talking about China in particular, just because of its sheer size and importance as a market, as a destination for exports, uh, it's used its position uh, somewhat uh, with, uh, with great weight to make quite stringent rules amid a very ambitious agenda. It, of course, wants to completely abandon petrol and uh, diesel vehicles by 2040, uh, with quotas for electric vehicle sales gradually being expanded every year. But the this is, of course, one particular case where uh, China seems to have listened to the wishes of foreign companies like Volkswagen. For example, it had already wanted to implement an 8% quota of vehicle electric vehicle sales in the country by next year, but because German car makers and other foreign car makers as well complained that that was not enough time for them to prepare, they had pushed back the rollback to 2019 instead. It's also moved to ease foreign ownership restrictions on companies making new energy cars in free trade zones. So for that in that respect, China seems to be making moves to accommodate uh, at least German car makers and other foreign car makers push into the electro electric vehicle space. Volkswagen is trying very much not to get left behind uh, amid all these moves, especially as it tries to clean up its act after Dieselgate.